So you just use your inner arm to check the temperature. Anything that can't burn you or that is not too cold on you, then same to the baby, it's of the same importance. So after you're done with that, the first thing you do, you you address your baby, but always make sure don't expose your baby because you're preventing cold. So like now it's very cold, so to keep a room warm, you can either for the very cold places, you can either do a heater, or you can rather maybe close all the doors and the windows and the room gets warm. So, so. And remember for the moms who are using heaters, don't overuse the heaters because others will be, be sleeping. Heat on and what happens? It dries the mucous membrane. So at least if you're using a heater, maybe you can have a bowl and uh, put a bowl of water next to the heater. That humidifies the room and that's preventing the drying. So, so. Yeah. So after that, what you do, you just undress your baby and always make sure have eye contact with your baby. Remember, it gives bonding. And also, it's also important for at least the parents. Even though you have caretakers at home, it's always good as a parent do your baby's bathing. Because it creates bonding and you know most of Nairobi moms we are working. The dads are also working. So the only way you can bond, you're not there to play with them, maybe by bathing or massaging your baby. So, so. so there is no specific time of cleaning the baby. That's why we say however much you're a working mom or a working dad. You can always create time. Even though it's at night in the morning, whichever time you're free, there is no specific time we say it's good for cleaning the baby. So when you're available, just have time, clean your baby, create the bonding with your baby. So after you've done, you after you, you, you've undressed your baby, you always leave the diaper on to prevent the soiling. So, so. Then from there, I'm assuming, okay, for me, I'll use the top to top because it's a bit easier for me. So I can have this end, put a few drops in there, bathe in water. Then depending on what you used to, you usually used to clean the baby, you can have maybe a soft baby cloth or maybe you can do cotton wool. And always make sure you buy the one that doesn't fly away because otherwise it will bring allergies to the baby. Like, so when you're buying, just select that the one that is not so fluffy. Yeah, so after you have cotton wool, you just take, you make it into balls, then you just dip in, into the water, squeeze it off and start by cleaning the eyes. So you always wait from the inside coming outside. So that's how this is to prevent infection in case there was maybe some bit of infection on the outer side of the face, it doesn't come out of the eye. So you just take the cotton wool, wipe and discard that. You don't use the, you use another one for the other eye, so you take another one and clean the other eye. Sour. So after you're done with that, you can now maybe clean the ears, you can either use the your baby's bathing cloth. It's, you can just make a, a, you can just roll around one of the corners. Okay, some moms use cotton buds, but hardly do moms know how to use them. They end up getting rid of all the wax, and you know the wax has a function in the ear. Others even, they, they can harm the eardrum. Others will pass infection into the ear, and you know babies are prone to ear infection. So to prevent all that, you can only be sure when you use an edge of a cloth, maybe of the baby's bathing cloth, and use it to clean the ear, you know it can't go so deep. And like the earbud, you have no control over. Okay, yeah, so you do that to both of the ears, then from there, you can now clean the mouth and the nose. So, so. Yeah, then when you're done with that, you can just have your cloth and wipe the rest of your face. So you see there is no, at no point have we clean the baby's face that by pouring water on it. Yeah. So after you, you're done with that, you can now clean the baby's head. And what you do about the head, the thing is the grip. Most moms fear cleaning a baby's head because of the grip. They fear maybe the baby can trip off. But it all matters when the grip is what matters with a safety grip. So always make sure your palm supports the head. And then the rest of your arms, the rest of your arms supports the spine. So by doing so, even though someone came to hit you from behind, it's very hard for you for the baby to treat. At the end of the baby, you slide back, the baby will not fall off. And if you just hold it like this, the baby can easily fall off. So once you're using the safety grip, you just clean the head. So depending on what you're using, it's either the shampoo, if you're using a shampoo and the hair, maybe you can just have some bit of water aside so that you don't have to keep the baby in the water that you used to clean the, the hair with. But if you're using the top to top, it's all the same as you're using it for the rest of the whole hair. Yeah. So after you clean the head, the next thing always dry the head because the head loses the most heat. Otherwise, if you don't dry it off, and especially for the baby girls, they have a lot of hair. So the hair end up trapping a lot of cold. And that cold in return, the baby ends up getting chest infections. 
Yeah, so to prevent all that after cleaning the head, just dry off the head. And then from there now you can remove the baby's diaper. So I'm assuming at least you have a flat surface like your head. Because most babies are washed in their bedroom. They are not in the bathroom. So you just remove the diaper keenly. And always when it's a baby girl, you wipe from front going backwards. This is to prevent any genital infections for the girls. And also for the boys, that's the way to go. Because it's even hard for you to eat from the back and coming to the front. So whichever gender, it's always front to back. Sawa, sawa. Then after that now, you can dip your baby in water.